I'm going to teach you five Ali Abdal editing hacks that you can do in CapCut so you can create viral shorts like he does. Sounds too good to be true. Yeah, well, it's true, so back off, man. Number one, let's create paper edges. Ali uses them all the time like this and like this. This one took me a minute to figure out, but I'm going to save you the trouble and tell you exactly what to do. I started by searching the web for a paper edge I could just rip off. I tried to figure out how to do it digitally. I did find this paper tear right there, but it's not modifiable. You can't even move it. So here's what I did. I grabbed a sheet of paper. I ripped it, created a couple pieces of paper that look like this. And ideally, you're going to want to put something like this on a green screen. It's not a green piece of paper because that's what's easiest to key out. But any bright color, if it's smooth, is going to work. I couldn't find anything that was perfect, but I did find an Elsa cape. I don't know. Elsa, please, I know you're in there. This purple side turned out to be pretty good. It's wrinkly. So I broke out my iPhone, took a picture of that piece of paper on that purple cape, and was able to create this. Doesn't look like much, but it actually works. All you need are two clips that you want to separate with a torn edged piece of paper. Here's a clip of me, and we'll grab Mr. Beast. We'll just adjust the position and scale so they look pretty good. Then we find our purple little cutout thing, drop it on top. We're gonna to use a mask so we have less purple that we have to key out, because we can say, hey, Cap cut, remove this color, but there are so many shades of purple on here and it's all wrinkly that it would be a little tough for it. So we're gonna just grab this mask rectangle and adjust it to cover as much of this as we can. Then we're gonna click on cut out, select chroma key, select the color picker, choose a color that's kind of right in the middle, right around there, then adjust the strength until all the purple goes away. Now we just scale this guy up and we could leave it just like this. But if we want to tweak it a little bit, we can jump on over to adjust and go to basic and adjust the color a little bit if we want to make it look a little more like white paper. So we can just kind of bump up the, the highlights a little bit. Looks cool. It would also be cool if we had a drop shadow. Now, I have not found a good drop shadow for a still image like this in CapCut. If you know of one, let me know. But what you do instead is we just duplicate this layer. On a Mac, you hold down the Option key on a PC you hold down the Alt key and you click and drag up, and now we have two layers. We're just gonna turn this bottom layer here into a drop shadow. To do that, we're gonna jump over to Curves, and we're gonna drag this down so we can see this entire curve here. We're gonna take the right side of the curve and just drag it all the way down to the bottom, and what that did is it turned the back layer black. To see that, we're gonna turn off that top track and we see, oh, there's some black there, like a shadow. So we're just going to take this bottom one and drag it down a little bit like that. To make it look a little more realistic, we're gonna jump over to video, make sure we have basic selected, go down to opacity and just drag that down a little bit. You can do the same thing with side-by-side -side video or stills, just flip the thing vertically. Number two, let's animate a clip with a torn edge in the background like Ali does in this video right here. I go into a lot of this section in more detail in the video linked below, which you should check out after this video, but just really quickly, I'm going to duplicate this clip of me. I'm gonna cut out the top layer by hitting cut out and auto cut out. If I click this hide track, I can see that I'm actually cut out. Next, I wanna get rid of some of this background and I do that by selecting the background layer, going over to mask and selecting split. Then I'm just gonna flip this thing around so it crops it down to there, and I'm gonna put it right about there. Next, we want a background for this empty space here. I created one similar to Ali's background in Photoshop, but you can use anything, take anything off the internet, it'll work fine. I'm just gonna click and drag it here in between these two layers and drag this layer above it. Next, we wanna drop in our paper edge. Instead of going through that same process again, here's one I just made as a still. So I'll put it right here. And I'm just gonna drop it where it needs to go and scale it up and then rotate it a little bit so it covers everything. Next, I'm gonna select all of these clips, right click and choose create compound clip so I can move all of this stuff together. Allie would have something happening up here and we wanna pop into the screen and maybe that stuff would move out of the way. So to do that, to have me pop into the screen, we're going to position the playhead where we want me to start to pop into frame and just drop me all the way down by clicking and dragging down. We're gonna set a position keyframe here. Remember a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. We're gonna go forward maybe eight frames. Then we're gonna just click and drag this guy up into the frame and it would look like this. In that linked Ali Abdal video, I show you how to smooth out the keyframes, but after smoothing out the keyframes, it would look like this.
You can also add motion blur to it, which I show in the other video, which will make it even better. Next, Ali uses a lot of lists with animated icons and text like this right here. Let's go ahead and do something similar. I like that newspaper background, so I grab some newspaper off the internet. We need to make it fit, so we're just going to rotate it 270 degrees. So it looks like that, and then scale it up so it fills the frame. And then give a little bit of an angle, so it has a little more style, except it's reversed in Ali's video. To reverse this, we simply go over to Adjustments and... Let's make some room for this graph here. We're in the curves graph. We take the right one and drag it all the way to the bottom and the left one and drag it all the way to the top, but it's a little bit too bright. Allie's is more subtle. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on video and go down to opacity and drag it down to about 25%. To give it a little life, we want the newspaper to be moving a little bit. So here's what we do. We jump over to effects. We type in rebound. We add rebound swing to it. And now it moves around like that. That's pretty similar to what Ali does, but to make it closer, we're gonna make these values 10, 30, and 20. You can use what you like. This just kind of worked for me. And now it looks like this. Let's now create that Ali style list. We're gonna jump over to text, grab the default text, drop it on top of everything. Let's highlight the text and select a font similar to Ali's. This lipstick rage is pretty close to what Ali was using. Next, we position it by clicking in the middle and dragging it up. We'll type in the steps that we've taken so far. This one line looks perfect and we want the other ones to match. To do that, we just duplicate the text layers. To duplicate the text layers, hold down Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, click and drag up, and bam, there's another layer. We're gonna move that one down by dragging it and type in the next step. And again, for the last step, to get all these guys to line up, we highlight all of them by clicking and dragging. And then if you scroll down here, you see we have these icons that let us left to justify everything. We can also make them spaced evenly by clicking on this guy. Ali uses type on text all the time. So to do that, we're gonna click on one of the text layers, go over to animation, make sure we have in selected and scroll down to type one, double click it. And that typed on, it typed on kind of fast. We're just gonna slow it down a little bit, give it maybe a second plus. And then we'll do the same thing for all the layers. So far it looks like this. Except we don't want them to start at the same time. Ideally, I'd be speaking these things as they type on, but this is just an example. So I'm going to move them over so they just start at slightly different times. That would give us this. Ali uses check marks at the beginning of the list that we showed. So let's go ahead and add some check marks. Fortunately, CapCut has stuff like that built in. We just go over here to stickers and we select emphasis and we scroll down till we find something we like. Here's one that'll work. We're just gonna click and drag it right here. And we're gonna use this three times. So let's get this thing dialed in pretty close, positioning it where we want it right there. It's gonna option click or alt click on a PC and duplicate these so that they appear in the appropriate places right as the other text layers begin. And we get this. Number four, the unfolding paper effect. This was much more complicated than I thought, but I found a super easy hack. So. You don't have to go through what I did. There are many ways to do this and most of them are pretty complicated. One way is to do stop motion where you put your camera on a tripod, set up a green screen down here, put your paper on there and unfold it and take one picture at a time. Please kill me. Another way is to use After Effects, which is a complicated program if you've never used it before. But I found I found a hack that you're gonna love. Want to just go full frame unfold paper between two shots? That's easy. I'll show you that first. Then I'll show you how to do the little ones that you can pop all over the screen like Ali does. Here's a shot of Jimmy and a shot of me. If I want to appear on screen with unfolding paper, I just go over to transitions and I scroll down to paper ball and I drop it on the transition here. And automatically without knowing anything about After Effects, I just click and go, bam, and I appear on screen. Looks pretty good. And you can adjust the duration of it right here if you want it to last longer. That is a pro effect and I do have the pro version. On the mobile version of CapCut, you can use a pro feature and then screen record it when you go full screen and then you get the pro feature for free. I'm not sure if you can do that on desktop. So if one of you would try that, let me know and I'll pin that in the comment below. Now I'm gonna show you the easiest way I've found to get that unfolding paper effect on smaller graphics that don't fill up the whole screen. In a brand new project, import the graphic that you want to apply that effect to. I'm gonna click on import and I'll grab the CapCut logo. I'm gonna drop that into the timeline. I'm gonna make it about eight seconds long. And that's important for a reason I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to divide it by hitting Command B. I'm gonna grab that transition, which is called Paper Ball. Drop it here. It's gonna give this warning. It doesn't matter that it's creating duplicate frames. It's a still image. I'm gonna click OK. And then I can play it. And it's like, oh, it almost works. Dang, what do I do? I just go to this first clip, go over to Opacity and take it to zero. And now we have 
Whoa, so that almost works, but there's another step you need to do. I tried exporting this and bringing it in another CapCut project, but it couldn't accurately key out just black. So what you need to do is put this over a bright green background. If you go over to media and you click on library and scroll down, you'll see this guy right here. You just drag this on top of this and then drag this above it. And now this appears over a green screen that we can export. You can change the duration of the transition, which will slow down that effect. And if you click and drag it, you see it stops right at about four seconds because the maximum duration is one half the duration, the shortest of these two clips. And at that speed, it looks like this, which is pretty slow, but that might work for you. For me, somewhere in here is pretty good. And we're just gonna export the whole thing by hitting export. Now we can go back into our old project, grab our CapCut logo ball, and we're just gonna drop it on top of this layer here so we can see it over my head. Oh no, it's green. What do you do? You go over to cutout, you click chroma key, click the color picker, choose a shade of green, adjust the strength up, position this guy, scale this dude, position the playhead on the very first frame, which is right there. Hit command B or control B on a PC. And now watch this. I can scale it down and put it over here and I can angle it a little bit. A little sound effect looks like this. Number five is one of the most important things to keep people watching your shorts. Let's create captions in the style of Ali Abdal. You just go over here to the left panel, you hit auto captions, hit create. So it's already created the caption. You can see here, they're pretty small and unreadable. What we wanna do is not have complete sentences. We only wanna use three or four words at a time for our captions. So to do that, we select captions up here and we can see all of them. And we just go every three or four words and hit the enter key. And you can quickly create captions that are shorter and easier to read on screen. In this captions window, you can also correct anything that it may have transcribed inaccurately. Once you've corrected all the captions, we go back to the first clip, make sure it's highlighted. We come over here and we select a font. The font that's similar to what Ali uses is Roboto. So we'll go ahead and select Roboto regular. Then we're just gonna scale the font size up a bit so it's readable. Then we're going to change the color of the font to black by clicking here, selecting black. We're going to scroll down and make sure there's no stroke or anything selected, no stroke, low shadow, but we do want a background. We want the background to be white like that. And then we also want to round the edges a little bit. So we'll go to 20. Notice that it did it for all of these. We then want to position the captions where we want most of them to go. So we're gonna click on this guy again, make sure apply to all is still selected. We're gonna drag this guy up right here on my hat so it's not covering either of our mouths. And it put all of them about there. Because apply to all is selected, anything I change in one caption will change all of the captions, but I'm gonna go through each one of these and make sure none of them are positioned where they don't make sense or where they're blocking something important. And to manually adjust something like here, I've got, there's so much text on this screen, I don't want any text at all there, so I'm just gonna delete that one. That works, but it doesn't here. So I can manually adjust this one by clicking on it, uncheck apply to all, drag this guy down so it's under my chin, then maybe do the same thing for this one. And you just go through the same process for the entire video. To see the entire YouTube short I created in the style of Ali Abdal, you wanna click on this video right here. In that video, I also share the other five techniques that you need to create an Ali Abdal style video. So watch this video right now.